afternoon from sunny South Florida and today we're heading to Homestead exit 5 we're heading into uh, Coral Castle if you haven't heard from it um, it's my first time going so let's see what it's about it's a group on sale two for $19 and I think admission is $19 alone so that's a pretty good deal so let's take you along this journey the next tour shall start shortly, so the tour guide right at the door will show you over. So okay, yeah, thank you. Cool, yeah. thanks. So when it first started, it was at Mission 10 cents. And then you would drop it below. How cool is that? Here. So when you come in, you get the guides. Welcome to Coral Castle. Yeah, good read about that. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's his size. <laughs> Can you take You need a cushion. You need to push pebbles, rock pebbles. You look like you're constipated. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're welcome to jump on that tour, but they're on those phones. So we do have some people waiting underneath the canopy for the next tour to start. Okay. Yes, do whichever you want. Well, we'll be starting up a new tour soon and I'll be covering it for Okay, thank you. <laughs> Look at this. So, this is the map. Now we're going on the entrance of Coral Castle. Yeah, so this was the way to get in. And it had an iron gate over here. You can see the hinges on it from the, the right-hand side. That uh, iron gate was unfortunately ripped off during the hurricane back in 1992. Now people were absolutely <laughs> amazed by this when Ed built it. They'd come in here, they'd see this, and they were like, wow, you know, Ed, how, how could you build something like this? This is incredible. Now, Ed would actually never tell anyone how he would do it. He would always say one of two things. He would either tell them, it's easy if you know how, or he'd say midnight. Morning and night, well, the, when Ed worked on his castle was at nighttime. Ed would only work at night, and that was for <laughs> two reasons. There it was for one time of day. Right here, this man is sitting in the morning chair. The morning chair was, was for when the sun would rise, it would shine down its light and illuminate the book that Ed was holding in his lap so that he wouldn't have to squint. Now, the afternoon chair was for when the sun was directly above Ed, shining right down into his lap to illuminate the book he was holding. And the evening chair worked much like the morning chair. When the sun would set, the light would shine down onto Ed's book. Ed designed... Florida. Florida, that is correct. This is in the shape of the state of Florida. Now, we got the peninsula down there, the Lake of Joby, Georgia cut off, <laughs> and the Panhandle. Now, Ed built this table for one specific reason. He always wanted the governor of Florida to come down to his castle and debate with him about politics. Now, unfortunately, that never happened for Ed, as the governor of Florida never came down. Now, if you guys were the governor of Florida, Maybe go fish, that could be it. Nah. No, I mean, Ed was a weird man, so maybe he did play football. 
makes it up. You'll actually see that this is very layered and linear. Oh, you can see the little lines running through it. As opposed to maybe the telescope or the walls that have a much more sponge-like texture to them. Now, everything with that sponge-like texture was mined out, so you can't actually see it working. Now, the sun would shine down and cast a shadow from this piece into the bowl. Now, the time right now is 2.05, so the shadow would be cast about maybe right about here at 105. November, October, November, December, back down with January, February, March, April, May, and June. Now, these loops are actually the path the sun takes in the sky. Now, now the, um, sorry, the, there are actually pictures of Billy Idol in this chair in the gift shop. Him and, um, I believe, the, some woman, I think his girlfriend. They were here, they had pictures of them. The sundial, we have the sun couch. Now, Ed built that sun couch because earlier in his life, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. So he built this in hopes to cure it with the sunshine. He'd come out here when he was in the forest, he'd lay down on the sun couch and sunbathe much like a lizard would. Now the three raised spots around the couch are supposed to be pillows, but I don't know if I would consider them that as they are made of solid rock and they do look quite uncomfortable. Now this here, it actually did use to rotate back in Ed's day. It's balanced atop a brake drum from a forward model to the rock. Now, unfortunately, unlike the three-ton gate, there's no way to lubricate this. So it did eventually succumb to the weather here and seize up due to the rust. Now, if you guys actually look up videos of Coral Castle on YouTube, you can actually see people spinning this around. There's a bunch of children get it spinning around. This slim, elegant throne here is Sweet 16 throne, or Agnes' throne. Off to the side of her, right behind you, is the Child's throne. Now this chair right here, this is a very interesting chair. This is said to have been the most uncomfortable chair Ed built this. Uh, if he and Agnes were ever to get into an argument, they'd come here, sit down hip to hip, face to face, and they'd talk out their differences. Sure. Now, maybe this won't be that rough with it as it is a little bit delicate, but no, it's, it's good that you're getting into it. The moon, it has phases throughout the year. It will wax and wane. Now, this specific layout of planets, there is actually not, this is not found in the solar system. There is, this is not an actual layout you'll see. We don't know why Ed chose to lay them out like this. Uh, it really is pretty much up to his decision as he did make it. So we're not really sure what the meaning behind it was. This is the north wall. Now the north wall is split into three separate sections. Two smaller pieces off to the sides and one large piece in the middle. Now the large piece in the middle on its own weighs 30 tons or 60,000 pounds. That's quite heavy. Now if you look on top of it, this rock formation is perfectly symmetrical. If you were to draw a line straight through the middle, it would be completely equal on both sides. Mm. Now, right over here, if you look directly, if you stand actually right where that woman is standing, right there, look directly at the wall, you can see that Ed drilled a hole straight through it. It's believed to be in the center of gravity. Now, this hole, no one really knows why Ed put the Right there is the nine ton gate. Yes, excuse me. The nine ton gate was the gate that at one point you could push with just a finger. Now, please take notice of the sign. It does say the gate does not rotate more, so please do not push on it. If you have to push on the gate and it starts spinning around, please notify me as you have broken the gate. Now, back in Ed's day, you could push it with just a finger. It had it so well balanced. Now, the well is only this small piece right here. That whole piece is actually a refrigerator. Now, Ed's well, he drilled 15 feet down and he hit the Biscayne Aquifer. The Biscayne Aquifer is a freshwater river that runs underneath the entire state of Florida. Anywhere from West Palm Beach and south, it is 15 feet below the surface. Anywhere north of West Palm Beach, the elevation starts to increase, so you dig a little bit further down. Now, back in Ed's day, that water was extremely fresh. The water was so clean, you could take a bucket right out from the water and drink it straight from the well. Unfortunately, due to overusage today, the water is not exactly greater. Ed would take his leftover food, put it in glass or plastic jars, and slide it underneath that third step. If you look at the bottom platform and count three steps up, underneath that third step, it's actually been hollowed out. Now, the water level actually used to be small animals with small children. Don't follow me as well as that. 
Now, right over here, this is Ed's bathroom. If you look at the top right hand corner, there's a pipe that you could put a cork into. Now, if you cork it up before he filled it, and after he was done bathing, he would just uncork it, and the water would drain right down into the gravel. Now, right above the bathtub is the fourth six pointed star throughout the castle. It's engraved <coughs> into the wall there. A lot of people like to ask if Ed put his shampoo and soap there. Now, interestingly, I'm pretty sure Ed made a mirror. Now, Ed took a piece of slate, encased it in limestone mortar, and put, poured water on top of it, and it's a very good reflective surface. You guys are free to walk up and use it yourself. It's surprisingly, it works surprisingly well. Now, it's not the greatest mirror ever, but now, right here, this room is Ed's bedroom. Now, don't let that fool you, as Ed didn't actually live here. He lived up in that apartment right there. This was a much more symbolic piece. It was more of a representation of the family Ed always wanted, but unfortunately, the family he never got. He had a his and her style bed for him and Agnes, his sweet 16. Two small made 1928, the year Ed made this. Moved 1939, the year Ed moved that up to this castle. Born 1887, the year Ed was born. Latvia, Ed's home country, and E.L. for his full name, Edward Leedskalm. Now, up on the top of the obelisk, there's a hole going through the center. The fifth six-pointed star is that hole going through the center of the obelisk. We just had a north wall. Quite interesting. So right now we're at what you call the repentance corner near it. <laughs> I have to say, it was kind of harsh. A lot of people like to say this looks much like a prehistoric barbecue pit. If you guys want to come up and take a window to look through. I'll explain how Ed would use it. Now, right here, this is a rear differential from a Ford Model T. Ed hinged it on the bottom to cook his food, so if he needed to open it, he'd open it up like this and he'd stick his food inside. Now he'd close it back down with his food in and he'd push it over the fire. Now the differential did used to slide along this rail here. It would slide out and in the fire, pump air into there, get the fire white hot. And that's presumed to be how he bent this bar and actually flattened it out on this side. Now it's also rumored that Ed built, um, I'm sorry, not built, repaired local farmer tools for them. Now Ed did build many of his own tools, so it's not that far off to say that he could have repaired tools for other farmers. Unfortunately, there really is no solid evidence for that, so we can't say that it's true. If he could, it said that if he needed something, he would either build it himself or trade for it. Now, when the new owners bought the place in 1953, they found a box in Ed's apartment full of his rocks. Good welcome to the tree there and the benches. Yeah, have a seat. <laughs>
here is known as the Grotto of the Three Bears. This was kind of like the, you know, relaxing spot back in Ed's day. People would treat the park much more like a public park. Right up there, those gentlemen are sitting on top of Papa Bear's bed. Probably can pick up some French muffins up there. But the last language that I talk to French speak is German. Now this piece is quite a unique piece here in the castle. There's nothing really quite like this throughout the entire place. Ed really only wrote down one thing about this. He wrote down the name of this piece. He named this the evolution of man from the sea. Now other than that, Ed did not give us any information about this piece. Now we do know what it's made of. He made it out of broken shells. You know, look at it, sees things inside of it. Many people do look at here and find, you know, other things that are represented in here. Unfortunately, we don't really know what this is, as Ed didn't write down what he meant it for. So there's no right answer, there's no wrong. Up above the tool shed, there are 16 steps over on that side for Sweet 16 Agnes, little Ed's life. Climb up there, you can go see where Ed lived. Now, in the tool shed, you can actually see the leaf springs in one of the corners that Ed would have used to mine out the limestone. Now, there are actually grooves along the top of the blocks in the shed as well. And if you look at them, you can actually see the rafters near them too. Now, the rafters in there are very special. They're made out of logs of Dade County Pine. <laughs> you guys haven't heard about Dade County Pine before. It doesn't surprise me, as that wood has been extinct. You're recording me? <laughs> I'm honestly really afraid. It's kind of sweet. Can you imagine a wet day from this algae on the floor? He was five feet tall, I think. No, is he five or four? God. Five feet. Should we go ask? No, he's I've been five feet. Four I, feet I, I this was whole paying tour. attention. Okay, maybe he's five because I'm five and two. So, look at if you stand over here, point it out. Yeah. That's Ed. He a brilliant man built this guy, and he's about to fall. <laughs> so this is the entrance here, and then. You will be seeing unusual accomplishment. That's pretty cool. He was five feet tall. Right? Yeah. Okay. Oops. I've been saying four feet. Sorry. I'm paying attention. He's at five <laughs> feet. A too short. Yeah. I was like, you know, it was. I think it was the podium that <laughs> sidetracked me. Oh, that, <laughs> that was cool. Thank you. <laughs> Museum. Established 1923. That's right. It's 1923. And I think, uh, yeah, they took over. Sorry. <laughs> ah, <blah. laughs> and then here, it's a beautiful house view. I honestly, I think I want to live like this. Can you, can you build the house for me? Maybe. I want, can you build me a coral house? Okay. I mean, something that I could say, he left a legacy? <laughs> wow. So, 
that concludes our tour here at Coral Castle. We had fun. I had a lot of fun. You know what? We had a lot of fun. Maybe it's because we like uh, museums and stuff. Maybe it's not for everybody. I'm gonna say probably not, right? Probably. But it was good for us. First time and we loved it. Can't wait to show you the pictures that we took as well. And that is the back side of the Coral Castle. Aw, bye Coral Castle. Ooh, another uh, tip, 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 tip. When Hurricane Andrew came around here, a lot of the things were blown away and damaged by it. So that's not cool. And of course, when it first started, the admission was just 10 cents. And you drop it below here. And look at these little guys are everywhere. That is so cool. Hey, you wanna get something to drink? There's like a bar here. I'm pretty Frozen sure that's lemonade. snow. Yeah, dipping dots. Coral Castle Cafe. Let's see. Ay ay ay. So we got dragon fruit, ice slushy, cherry with blue raspberry and coke. We can use debit card. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Dragon fruit not ready yet though. Okay. <laughs> the others are lemon lime. Is that like lemonade or? That's lemon lime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. That one? Yeah, I'll have that one. Which one you want, babe? I can't decide with the cherry. Because the dragon fruit is not ready. Cherry or blue raspberry? And there's Coke. Uh, raspberry, no, no. Blue raspberry. Oh, right here, yeah. There. Uh, blue raspberry, yeah. This is a nice little sit down area. Take easy, take bed. Since you didn't build me a coral castle in time, you pay for it. <laughs> oh, let's get some chips. You want some chips? Uh oh, there goes the diet. I want Doritos nacho. You want those? Yeah. So that concludes our day here at Coral Castle. I have a cookie in my mouth. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. And I can't wait to do it again with my mom, my dad, and possibly my, my nieces and nephews. I think they'll have a blast. So thank you y'all for checking it out. Like and comment the, the video. And hope you make it out here. Bye.